Welcome back to Three Months of Modal Logic, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with Temporal Logic, looking at Minimal Temporal Logic. This is going to be the first of several axiomatic systems for Temporal Logic that we're going to be looking at. So, as with Alethic and Deontic Modal Logic, we are going to call our basic Minimal Logic KT. We call the other ones K something. The K follows from Kripke, after Kripke, Saul Kripke. So we'll call minimal temporal logic K T, T standing for temporal, of course. This will include our change of temporal quantifier definitions, an isomorph of each of our standard K and the necessitation rule, and a new pair of axioms relating the past predicates to the future predicates and vice versa. Note that this does not include any assumptions about the properties of precedence. Remember, for the first half of this month, we talked about the properties of the precedence relation. This minimal temporal logic does not make any assumptions about precedence. Okay? So, we remember from Alethic modal logic, axiom K looks like this. It's necessary that A implies B implies that it's necessary that A implies it's necessary that B. In deontic modal logic, it looks very similar. It's obligatory that P implies Q, implies that it's obligatory that P, implies it's obligatory that Q. And temporal logic is not going to be much different. We're going to take our strong tense modifiers, G and H, and basically do the same thing. It will always be the case that P implies Q, implies that if it will always be the case that P, then it will always be the case that Q. If you stop and think about that for a second, it should make complete sense. The same goes for has always been. Basically, if a conditional always will be, then if the antecedent always will be, then the consequent always will be. And if a conditional always has been, then if the antecedent has always been, then the consequent has always been. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, these two axioms, no, we have two of them now because we have two strong tense modifiers, as there are tense predicates, rather, as opposed to just one. Here is a direct example that might make more sense of this. If it always will be the case that if it rains, it pours, then if it always will be the case that it is raining, then it will always be the case that it is pouring. We're going to take these as T-A-K-G and T-A-K-H when we're using them in proofs. Once again, really to make sense of this, let's look at it in terms of a timeline. So it's always going to be the case that P implies Q implies that it's always going to be the case that P implies it's always going to be the case that Q at time T means that at time T, let's assume that it's the case that it's going to be the case that P implies Q. And so that means that at all future instants, P is going to imply Q. And let's assume that it's going to always be the case that P once we make those two assumptions, what needs to follow for this to be valid is for it's always going to be the case that Q to follow. Well, at this last time instant we have, we have both P and P implies Q, so we can conclude Q. And in fact, for any instant after this one, we can conclude Q. Therefore, it's always going to be the case that Q is going to follow from these first two pieces. So this makes sense. Next up, let's talk about the modal logic necessitation rule. So if a is the case, or if A has been proven from the rules and the laws of logic that we have, then it's necessary that A. Deontic modal logic necessitation rule, if P is a law of logic or proven from the laws of logic, then it's obligatory that P. We talked about some questions around that. The temporal modal logic necessitation rule basically says that if P is a law of logic or can be proved from the laws of logic, alone, or our axioms of our system alone, then it is always the case that P. So it has always been the case that P, and it will always be the case that P. Remember that this sideways T means derived. What follows must be proven with the laws of logic alone. And AP is P is true at all times, past and present. Hopefully this makes sense. The laws of logic, if they're true in all possible worlds, they should probably be true at all possible times. So, we're going to represent this as TNR, the temporal necessitation rule. Basically, what we're saying here is that all of the logic, laws of logic have always been, and the laws of logic will always be, 
and the laws of logic are the case now. So unless you're doubting the laws of logic themselves, you're probably not doubting this law. Now, because system KT has two strong tense operators and two weak tense operators, unlike our other systems of modal logic, we need some rule relating the past to the future. These rules say whatever is the case will always have been the case, and whatever is the case also always has been going to be the case. We'll represent that with TAGP and TAHF in proofs. Now, this might not make sense at first glance, so let's take a look at it in terms of a timeline. So, P implies GPPT means that if P is the case right now, then at all points in the future will it be the case that P was in the past. So, if P is the case right now, then at some point in the future it will be the case that at some point in the past P was the case. And in fact, for all points in the future, at some point in the past P will have been the case. So, we can take here at instant T, it will always be the case that at some point in the past P was the case because P is the case now. Hopefully that makes sense. P implies HFPT is going to be the opposite situation, so P is the case now implies that at all moments in the past, it was at some point in the future, namely right now, going to be the case that P. And since that's the case for all moments in the past, we can say that it has always been the case that at some point in the future it would be the case that P. Hopefully that makes sense. If you put all of those axioms together, those five axioms, you will get system KT, or minimal temporal logic. Up next, we're going to start adding axioms. That was a very minimal, very basic temporal logic that doesn't tell us much about our time stream. We're next going to add our transitivity requirement and get transitive temporal logic. Watch a new video every single day for a hundred days here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.